Okay, let's open up the package and see what's inside. There's the uh, fin stock, and looks like we got quite a few uh, white tubes there. Those are body tubes, and two yellow spacers that are going to be used in assembly. So you see that little uh, black ring there? That is the motor block for the uh, the booster stage of the rocket. So the booster stage is the longer of those two short white tubes. And I'm just gluing in that uh, motor block into the back there with wood glue. I do that first so I can let it dry while I work on the other stuff. Here I'm going to go ahead and scuff up all of the body tubes with some 220 grit sandpaper. And then I'm going to cut out the fins. Now I want to stress, as always, to be ca very careful when you're cutting the fins out. You want to make sure that the the cuts are all the way through the wood before you try to punch the fin out because if you try to punch it out and there's still some spots where it's attached you could break off pieces of the fin which would be very difficult to sand off or create gaps that you need to fill in with glue or some sort of filler it's much easier to just make sure that the cuts are all the way through the wood before you try to punch the fins out versus you know trying to repair damage uh, later so there's kind of two ways you can look at this rocket. You could say, oh, it's so simple, it's so small, it's not very cool, it doesn't really have any neat features. Or you could say, wow, this is a minimum diameter rocket, it's high performance, it's going to fly super high altitude, it's going to fly super straight, it's got those giant fins, and it's going to be really fun. And it is. Uh, the, the packaging says... It can fly up to 2,600 feet, and I believe it. This rocket really is legit. And of course, the main thing is that this is a two-stage rocket, and you know, flying your first two-stage rocket is almost like a rite of passage in uh, your uh, rocketry hobby. So this is a really good first two-stage rocket because it because it is simple. So back to the actual rocket construction. Here I'm going to sand all of the edges of the fins. I'm really going to focus on the root edge surface of the fin because I want to make sure that that surface lays flat on the tube. So from when I glue it on, I get the uh, best contact possible to get the strongest joint that I can. So for the first flight of the rocket, I would recommend using the A8-0 staging to the A8-5 because it will basically keep the rocket as low as possible and ideally you would like to retrieve the rocket after it flies. Now with that being said I've never actually seen or held in my hand an A80 motor or an A85 motor. These are not common motors at all and so I will just say that you know if you can't find those motors at your local hobby store or wherever I would recommend flying it with a B60 to an A83. I wouldn't worry so much about the three second delay on the A8 and the sustainer. Um, there should be plenty of time for the rocket to slow down before the streamer ejects. And this motor combination should still keep the rocket relatively low so you can see it. So that's definitely what I would recommend. Okay, back to the actual build again. I just cut out the fin alignment guide. What this does is help us mark the tube so then we can glue the fins on straight and uh, parallel or really what I mean is parallel with the tube itself now there's a line on the fin alignment guide for each fin and so if you put a mark at the top and the bottom of the tube there using the guide then uh, you can connect the dots together with a straight line using that piece of angle iron there you see on the desk which we'll see me do here in a minute and as always, use painter's tape for this because you don't want to accidentally pull up some of the paper off of your body tube. And it's ideal to reuse the same tape for uh, both tubes, for, or in other words, for both sets of fins. Okay, so if you do want to try to go for the full 2600 feet by flying the C60 to C67 motor combination, there's, there's, a, there's a right way to do it. Okay, and so th these are the conditions that I would say are the right way to do it. Obviously, you want a big field 
and uh, also you would want that field to have short grass, uh, short as grass possible. If you're flying the rocket in a field that kind of has a lot of brush and is overgrown, that's going to make the rocket really difficult to see on the, on the ground. The uh, other thing is I would fly on a very, very clear day where the sky is blue. Uh, this will increase your odds of seeing the rocket while it's in the air, although I it, you're pr it's probably going to go out of sight and you probably will not see it. And so you really might just be confined to aimlessly walking around a field for a rocket that you didn't see land. That That is definitely likely if you fly it on the C60 to C67 combination. So that being said, I recommend flying it at a Rocketry Club launch where there's going to be a lot of people there. I also recommend flying it as one of the first launches of the day because if you don't find it after walking around for X amount of time, there's for some reason there's some sort of propensity for other um, rocket flyers to find your rocket on the field. And maybe that's because rockets tend to land in the same area, you know, because they the wind blows them in the same direction. I'm not sure, but if you fly it early on at a launch where there's a lot of rockets being flown, then you increase your chances of someone else finding your rocket in the event that it lands and you cannot find it. All right, so back to the rocket building. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a layer of wood glue on the root edge of the fin. What I like to do is let that dry, and I do the same thing on the body tube itself. This creates a stronger uh, bond between the fin and the tube and that's because if you just if, if you skip this step then some of the glue can go towards just seeping into the wood or seeping into the tube and uh, not not go towards actually bonding the two pieces together so it really is stronger if you uh, put the layers of glue on and let them dry and then put a uh, subsequent layer of glue on that will actually bond the, the fin and the tube together. So one of the things that I like about this kit is that it is designed very well for ease of assembly. By that I mean it only has three fins per stage. And when you're doing a two-stage rocket, you're going to at least have six fins. So at least you have six fins instead of eight fins. The other thing I like is how the tubes are cut and the spacers you know, the, are designed for it, such that it's... It goes together well. You don't have to do really any measuring at all. It just go, it goes together very easily. Okay, so once I'm done putting that layer of glue on all the surfaces, I like to do other stuff while it dries. So one of those things here is I'm going to mark a line on my tube, on the, on the longest tube, for my launch lug. That'll make sure that when I glue the launch lug on, it's parallel with the tube and the rocket doesn't sit slanted on the launch pad. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut out the shock cord mount, which is you know a good thing to do while other parts are drying. Okay, now I'm going to glue the shock cord and the shock cord mount. Try to watch pretty closely to the way I do it here. You don't want to just put you know big clumps of glue on the shock cord mount when you're gluing the shock cord in because the glue will flow out and onto your fingers and might not be evenly distributed across the shock cord mount. So I prefer to use like little dots of glue all over the surface to make sure that all parts of the shock cord mount are covered with glue and that too much glue doesn't flow out of the shock cord mount onto your fingers when you're gluing the shock cord in. Okay, so now I'm ready to start gluing the fins on the rocket, and I'm going to start with the booster stage. The first thing I do is I put a layer of glue over the previous layers of glue that we put on for each fin, and I just do it one at a time going around the tube, and then I let it partially cure so that it's really sticky, so it's not completely dry, but you know partially dry, and then when I go to put the fins on, the first fin that I put on is on the uh, first uh, layer that I coated with the wood glue. So that way, because it's the most dry, but because if you put the fin on your last layer of glue that you put on, your first fin on the last layer of glue that you put on there, by the time you get to the last fin that you're gluing on the rocket, 
the glue will already be dry. So this is really tricky. I got the film at 4x speed here. If you want to try to back out how long I let it dry or how long it let me or how long I took to put the layers of glue on there, it's probably a good idea if you're not experienced with putting fins on rockets. Also be careful you're gluing the fins on the right direction or on the right uh, part of the tube. That is the uh, trailing edge of the fin should be on the same side of the tube as the motor block. And wow, so look at that. All the fins are on that booster section of the rocket. Well, unfortunately, they didn't just magically appear on there. But what happened was is that the battery in my camera died. So I apologize for that. I'm really sorry that we didn't get to see uh, that whole process all the way through. The good news is, is the uh, fins on the sustainer section of the rocket is basically the same. So we are able to uh, watch me do all the fins for that right here. Now another option with building this rocket is to have glued the small tube into the uh, long body tube before gluing the fins on. This would have given you more uh, more area of the body tube to hold when mounting the fins. It would kind of make it easier to install them. However, I, I did it this way because when you have these really short sections of the tube, it, it seems like it's easier to get the fins on straight or to look at them to make sure they're straight after you mount them with the shorter section of tubes. That's why I did it like that, but you can do it the other way. All right, so here we're adding some fillets to the booster section of the rocket. Now these fins are obviously huge relative to the size of the body tube, and that's kind of a good thing for when this rocket comes down, or excuse me, when this booster section comes down because they're gonna catch a lot of air and it's going to tumble really well and it's going to land very gently which means that even though the fins are really big and they're just glued onto the outside of the tube like that it probably means they won't break just because it's going to come down so gently because it's going to flutter so well with that short tube and big fins and now i'm going to glue in the shock cord mount the main point here is to make sure that you glue it far enough into the tube such that there's still room for the shoulder of the nose cone and also when you're gluing it in to make sure you hold it for a while, I got the film here at 4x speed, and so you can back out how long I'm pushing down on that shot cord mount inside that tube. You know, if you pull it out too early, it's just, it just becomes a little bit of a mess, and then you have to redo it. It's much easier to get it right the first time. Now is a good time for me to mention shot cord length, and with shot cords, longer is always better. But the good news is, with this particular rocket kit that I have, the shot cord is already long, so. I did not add more length to it, which is pretty cool. Now this next part of the build process is probably my favorite because it's just so clever the way this is designed. Uh, the part that we're going to do here is we're going to glue the sustainer section fins to the rest of the body tube. You can see me put some wood glue in there. And the reason this is so cool is basically because you can't mess it up. You put in those two yellow spacers and those give you the correct length for how far you want to push in the tube coupler between the two sustainer body tubes. You see that yellow sticking out there. And now I'm just going to put some glue into the long body tube and push it on there all the way down. Obviously you want to put your hands there to alleviate some of the pressure. You don't want to put all that pressure on your booster fins and break them, but there you have it. Now it's glued in in the right spot. I removed the yellow tubes there and it's ready to just let it sit and dry. So make sure you turn the rocket upside down when you let it dry because if you did have excess wood glue in there, you don't want it dripping into the section of the body tube where you're going to have to mount the motor because too much glue in there would prevent you from being able to fit the motor inside the rocket. So that could be a critical mistake if you do not put the rocket upside down. All right, so now I'm gluing on the launch lug. I like where I had it placed this time. Uh, if you can kind of see it there, just a little bit above the fins. The important point here with the launch lugs, when you're gluing it on, to make sure you kind of look at it from different angles to make sure it's on straight. It's really easy to get the launch lug kind of slanted so that it's not straight. So look at it from a bunch of different angles to ensure that it's parallel with the tube before the glue dries. All right, so now I'm going to put the fillets on the sustainer fins. Now, it's important to make these fins as strong as you can because this rocket, this sustainer especially, 
is going to be very fast and very sleek. It's going to fly through the air uh, very well without a lot of drag. But that also means it's going to come down very fast, especially since we're using a streamer recovery. The uh, fins are not big compared to the diameter and the length of the body tube, and they're swept at, uh, beyond the back of the tube. And so it's going to come down, you know, with the fins first kind of at a slant, and it's going to come down fast, and it's going to land almost right on them. On top of that, the sustainer motor is friction fitted into the rocket, so you will have the weight of the empty motor casing. So these fins are going to get hit really hard, especially when you're coming down from really high. And so just do the best you can to make them really strong and basically hope that they land on a soft part of the ground and do not break. All right, now I'm going to put the fillets on the launch lug. Be careful with this. Make sure you don't put the glue all the way up to the ends of the launch lug because, especially if you're using a lot of glue, it could drip around the ends of the launch lug and dry on the tube that is basically you know the section of tube that the launch rod is going to be uh, up against and the launch rod might not fit if you have a big bead of glue uh, forward or aft of your launch lug so one of the keys to preventing that is to pay attention when it's drying but also to not start by putting glue all the way up to the ends of the launch lug all right so the rocket is ready to paint Here's all the spray paint that I use to paint the rocket. It's relatively simple. The only part of the rocket that I needed to mask off was the shoulder of the nose cone, which you'll see here in a second. And I didn't do the most amazing job with painting the rocket, but I just painted it good enough so that it looks decent from a little bit of a distance. There you can see the painted rocket. And here I'm going to cut out the decal, or the two decals that I'm going to put on this rocket. It had significantly fewer decals than a lot of other Estes rockets, and that made finish building it uh, much quicker, but at the end of the day, it doesn't look as good as some of the other rockets that have more decals on them, but this rocket is more about performance than looks, so that's okay. So when I was putting this big decal on, I had a little bit of trouble getting it wet enough to actually separate and uh, put on well, so... I'll do a couple iterations here. It's a little bit nerve-wracking because these decals can break kind of easily, so don't be shy about letting it sit in the water for a while. So now we're going to put on the decal with the Estes logo that goes on the fin. Now, although this is a very small decal, it's actually a really big decal relative to the fin. And so that's why I kept cutting it smaller and smaller and smaller until I finally got it on there. With this decal, I recommend just cutting right outside the lines on this on the first go around so you don't have to keep trying like I did. It basically barely fits on the fin, but it does look good once you put it on there. And I only put one decal on out of laziness, but uh, they did supply two others with the kit if you wanted to do two other fins. Next, we're going to cut out the little eye in the nose cone to tie the shot cord to with a hobby knife. And normally on most rockets, this is pretty simple, but I found on the Epic 2 that the plastic that you have to cut out is really pretty thick. Either that or my knife blade was dull or a combination of both. I'm not sure which, but it took me a little while to do this. And as always, be careful with this, not to cut your fingers. Uh, take your time and just kind of say, hey, you know what? It's not, not going to be easy on this one. 
All right, so we're getting close to being done with this build. Uh, the last step is to, or last steps, is to tie the shock cord to the nose cone and attach the streamer to the shock cord. Here I'm putting the shock cord through that hole we just cut out in the nose cone and I'm tying the shock cord and the nose cone together. Note that if you have any excess shock cord hanging off after you tie your knot, make sure you cut it because the nose cone is already tight in the body tube and if you had that piece of shock cord get caught in between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tube, either the nose cone is not going to slide into the body tube or you're going to deform the body tube trying to push the nose cone in really hard. So watch out for that. The other thing I want to note is that just as is, the shoulder of the nose cone was kind of tight inside the body tube. So before I fly this rocket, I am considering sanding the shoulder of the nose cone. Uh, so just Feel free to do that if uh, it just feels too tight. Okay, so now I'm just going to put everything back together so the rocket can sit upright for storage, and this build is complete.